Bear with me guys, I have to keep the air conditioner turned on because it's freaking hot. And by the way, if you have seen my previous videos, in case you missed it, I'm gonna leave the card up somewhere here. That was the edge of the world. Ooh, it was an amazing video, but the audio quality was so stupid. <laughs> Compared to that, I hope this video is gonna sound much, much better. Because from my previous video, I literally had to cut like so many parts, so many funny parts, just because the audio sucked. Literally, the mic couldn't get any of the voice because of the because of the wind. Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video. It's really nice to have you back. So in today's video, we're gonna jump back into the Excel. Yes, jump back into the Excel. That's the right word to use because that's one of the videos that's got the highest number of views on our planet. No, on our channel. <laughs> Why am I talking about the planet right now? I'm not an Elon Musk. So today in this video, I'm gonna talk about the difference in using an Excel on a Windows and a Mac. Just so you are aware, personally, I'm an Excel user on a Windows and I'm not that great with it on the Mac. So let's find out what are the difficulties in using Microsoft Excel on a MacBook. I also got a tons of comments on my previous video, how to install MS Office for free. It still works by the way. If you're looking for it, just go ahead and watch as soon as possible before if you know exactly what I mean. And on the previous video, I also got like tons of comments. People are planning to shift to using MacBook and will they find it difficult to install the Microsoft, install blah, 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 all these kinds of questions. So I thought about doing a video on that. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe, hit the will smash that like button for you to upgrade it up. So now let's get started. So in today's video, I'm gonna particularly speak about three major differences using Microsoft Excel on a MacBook. First things first, I'm gonna talk about the keyboard shortcuts. Everything sucks on a Mac, you know? <laughs> Most of them are not even functional. And the key difference here is the Alt becomes the option. And also you cannot browse through the ribbons as you would do on a Windows on a regular basis. Just like I'm a keyboard geek. I don't use mouse at all. I just, I'm just, a, I'm, I'm just a keyboard person. Just forgive me. I just can't work around with a trackpad or a mouse. I'm just, I'm just terrible with those things. I'm just a keyboard person. They're just so nice. They're just solid. They're just, they're just, they're just in place, you know, just intact. This video is not about me using keyboard or mouse. No, this video is about the Excel on a Mac. Yeah, let's get back. So back to the shortcuts. In case if you want to use the page now, you have to use the function and down arrow key or up arrow key based on page up or page down. And there is just so many difference. Like you literally have to learn whole new shortcuts to get around this. Personally, this is like a sort of very difficult thing because your muscle memory is kind of trained to it. Like even when you're half asleep, you can do the keyboards on the Microsoft Office on a Windows. But whereas on Mac, it's quite difficult. Most of the keyboard shortcuts won't work and you also have to find alternatives. You also have to learn how to get around things. And especially here's the funny part. When I use Excel on my Mac, I always have my Safari ready to go to search. Like how to do this shortcut on Mac how to do that should I get on Mac? Like this is no joke, this is a serious part. Like it's quite difficult. But don't get me wrong, for most users, for most, I mean like 80 to 90% of the users who are just dealing with Excel on a day-to-day -day basis should be pretty much fine. Because I'm talking about the advanced users. Uh, I do consider myself as an advanced user. Yeah, I'm a pro Excel user. <laughs> Excel is not that difficult, but you have to know a little bit of DAX and stuff like that, which I don't know. The next issue we face on the Mac is missing power pivots and pivot charts. So this is like one of the high level features of Excel most people don't use and most people don't even know they exist. By the way, this is like one of the key features when you are dealing with high levels of data. So basically power pivots is like you're getting into the data model and then you're working on top of the data model. So these are quite incompatible with the Mac and also the pivot chart tend to become static. They almost look like a picture and they are not that interactive. Again, it's gonna depend on the day we talk, obviously, because Excel is gonna bring changes and updates. As of now, it's not there. I think 20th of September... <laughs> 20th of September 2021. So I'm just talking based on this date. I don't know if Excel is gonna get better. If it gets better, that's amazing. That's gonna be like salute, respect gained. Maybe making it more interactive and easy and more optimized with the M1 chip? 
I don't know. If they can do that, that would be phenomenal. But as of now, these two things are like useless. For me, Power Pivot is like a day-to-day -day stuff, so I just cannot live without it. The third issue is the VBA weaknesses. Before 2016 version of the Excel, the VBA was not even a thing on the Mac. They just recently got kicked in and it's not that great yet. Personally, I don't use that much of VBA. I use a little bit of macros here and there. So for me, I just don't find that too complicated or difficult. At the moment, there is a little bit of VBA and you can do tax coding on it, I guess. I'm not that great with this part of Excel, so it's also one of the big weakness, but for me, it's okay. For me, the first two are like the deal breakers. So absolute no-no when coming to work Excel. So now that we have talked about all the problems, it's not a good idea to be part of the problems, right? Let's become the part of solutions and find solution to these problems. So solution number one, you can use the parallels or you can use the bootcamp to sidle all the windows and install a Microsoft Excel on it. Because Excel on a Windows is way, way, way much more amazing than on a Mac. Again, this doesn't mean that you cannot use Excel on a Mac, it works perfectly fine and the calculations are way much more faster on the Mac rather than on the Windows. I don't know about the Microsoft Surface but with other laptops I have used compared to the Mac, the Mac is like way faster in crunching numbers. That's a really really nice thing to have. But considering keyboard shortcuts and the power pivots, it's not gonna work. Here you have to use the parallels by the way, this is a paid software, you'll have to use it so that you can switch without resetting your Mac. If you're using on bootcamp, you have to restart your Mac each time you want to switch. So the only solution I see is parallels. Go ahead and give it a shot. If that works, bingo, pay for it, go for it. That's, that's a really nice thing to have. And I think that's kind of it. And this brings me to the conclusion. For most users, for most majority, for the most, most majority of users, you can use Excel on a Mac, like piece of cake. And by the way, if you have missed on how to install MS Office for free on a Mac, I will leave the card up here. If it didn't pop up here, it's gonna pop up here. Just either way, let me just finish this. It's, it's so confusing, like when you're sitting against the camera and the camera is mirrored and you just raise your left hand, that raise your right hand and you left raise your left hand. No, sorry, this is my right hand. <laughs> <laughs> this is so confusing. This is so confusing. So by the way, the conclusion for most users, you can use Excel on a Mac beautifully well, like over the moon. But for people who don't like change, who don't like to try new stuff, maybe, uh, and people who are like hard coded into the keyboard shortcuts, they're gonna find a little bit difficult. It's always possible to get around the things. So it is possible to use Microsoft Excel on the Mac beautifully well. And we have a slight inconvenience as we mentioned previously. I'm gonna leave the timestamps so you can skip around and juggle. And that's pretty much it from my side. By the way, if you are still here, you definitely need to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you all in the next one. Until then, stay tuned to my channel and bye-bye.